I'm Doug Chang. I'm the Vice President and Executive Creative Director for Lucasfilm. I'm Madeline Burkert. I'm Lucasfilm's Collections and Exhibitions Archivist. And today we're going to talk about every clone trooper and stormtrooper that's in the live-action Star Wars films. And yes, we do mean every trooper. Imperial Stormtrooper. Those are one of the most fascinating designs for me because that was the first image that I saw from Star Wars. And the idea for that was that George wanted to create these sort of iconic imagery that look like living skeletons. And that's why you have the stark black and white. And so when you see the white armor coming out of a black room, you just see the armor and it's a very terrifying sort of moment for you, especially when I was 15 years old when I first saw that. And one of the iconic things was that the helmet is very specific. It looks like a skull. It's a stylized skull. And Ralph McQuarrie did a brilliant job to take all the key elements like the eye sockets and the mouth to make it just sort of a touch mechanical but yet still harken back to a living skull. Initially the original trilogy stormtroopers were made in such a way that they were sort of geared towards actors that were around five foot ten to six feet to be able to fit into the armor. They were built out of vac form plastic. Uh, when it came time to fit Han Solo and Luke Skywalker into their disguised Stormtrooper armor. It took a bit of magic from the costume department to make them fit, but they were able to do it. I can't see a thing in this helmet. Sand Trooper, they are the same uh, design as the Stormtrooper armor, but they're uh, modified to look a bit more suited for the environment in which we see them, which is at first in A New Hope on Tatooine. Look, sir, droid. Distinguishing parts of this costume are partly the backpack that they wear. The backpack was created out of found objects from uh, just like a local hardware store. So fans have spent many a year <laughs> trying to recreate those backpacks in order to figure out what exact parts those components are made out of. The Sand Troopers also um, distinguished by a shoulder pauldron. The shoulder pauldron was originally a piece of uh, motorcycle protective gear that were, was worn for, for youths um, in the 70s. And so that piece actually very well suited this, those costumes. I mean, one of the things I love about the Sand Troopers is that you get to accessorize the classic Storm Troopers. And those little touches actually add so much personality and character to the Storm Trooper outfit. Space Trooper, while the majority of their armor is the exact same as a Stormtrooper, they are distinguished by a breathing apparatus on their helmets, so some of the um, some of the pieces on the helmet are slightly different to adapt for that. They have a, a backpack that provides ammunition. Uh, Joe Johnston, who was a concept artist and very heavily involved in the design process for the original trilogy Star Wars films, he actually played the two space troopers that you see in A New Hope were able to use some uh, photographic magic to make it look like theirs too, but really it's the same the same actor wearing the same suit. TIE fighter pilots are just a slight variation on your classic stormtrooper pilot. And the idea there was just to take the classic armor, the white armor, and turn it all black and give them a helmet. And then we actually are utilizing the breather adapters in the front of the uh, helmet. Those are always designed in there because these are supposed to be zero G outfits so you can actually breathe in space. And so we actually see those hose connections being used. The um, apparatus that we see attached to the, the chest armor, those are all also meant to evoke the same design that you would see uh, in terms of like the Death Star bridge or the control panels. They wanted to make it sort of emblematic of the Imperial ships. At At Pilot, first time that we see the At At drivers in their vehicles is on the Battle of Hoth in Empire Strikes Back. The helmet is derived from an original Stormtrooper helmet and a TIE fighter pilot helmet design, as well as the chest armor pieces, originally were TIE fighter pilot pieces that were then repainted and repurposed in order to accommodate this new vehicle, the, the AT-AT or the AT-AT. Snow Troopers from Empire Strikes Back are one of the designs and the variants that I found really fascinating. The snow troopers obviously are in a heavy snow environment, so you have sort of this facial shroud and they have more padded clothing just, to, you know, for warmth. But I think iconically, it creates a very interesting silhouette. Adding in to what Doug is saying, the components that you're able to play with, the backpack that implies that more gear is needed in this environment. Um, and as well, they, they have a slightly different arrangement of components of hard armored pieces to accommodate the fact that it might be a bit more difficult to move in this environment. The first time that we see the Imperial Royal Guard is in The Return of the Jedi. They are the guards for the Emperor. Uh, the Imperial Royal Guards are a stunning statement in terms of, you know, who are these people? And I think the idea of choosing 
to go with a bold red and kind of make them very mysterious so that their face looks kind of very exotic in that you don't know who's back there. Is it a droid or is it a person? And I think the overall silhouette is very powerful as these mysterious guards for the Emperor. Guards, leave us. The bright red is meant to provide a stark contrast to the set design, but it's also uh, kind of an homage. George Lucas was very much a fan of sort of classic hot rod cars. So this cherry red is definitely a color that was influenced by his, his love of those cars. Biker scouts or scout troopers are particularly suited for the forest environment. In this case, the uh, woods of Endor. Their components are designed as such that they'll be a bit more comfortable suited uh, sitting down. As well, the location of their pistol, which is the first time we actually see a sort of small handheld Free. sidearm pistol on a stormtrooper, um, that pistol is actually mounted in the, into their boot. I love their helmet design because we were trying to lean into sort of biker iconography and the idea that the mouth actually, you know, the snout became an open mouth, almost like an open scream, kind of created sort of a, an emotional look that's very terrifying. The helmet design for practical purposes was also designed where the face lifts up as they learned on set trying to situate a full stormtrooper helmet with seconds to go before the, the camera starts rolling. <laughs> this was a bit easier for the actors. The Clone Troopers were first introduced in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. For the Clone Troopers, none of them were actually built practically. They were all CG characters. That was a really fascinating design exploration because George wanted to connect Boba Fett with the classic Stormtroopers. And he was leading up to the fact that the Stormtroopers were going to be clones. In this time period, we were keeping all the angles very sharp and very stylized to kind of evoke sort of a more romantic time. And so in designing the, um, the helmet itself, we lean into designing a variant, uh, sort of a blend between the classic Boba Fett helmet and the Stormtrooper helmet. And that's why you see the strong T-visor. We retain the mouth, but we stylize it. So the helmet itself of the Clone Trooper, you'll see the evolution to the classic Stormtrooper. Unlike the classic Stormtrooper armor, which is traditionally white for all the different Stormtroopers, the Clone Trooper armor is distinguished by rank based on different colors and color patterns and schemes that are implemented into the costume design. Red denotes captain, yellow denotes pilot or commander, green denotes sergeant, and blue denotes lieutenant. Phase two Clone Troopers, uh, the style and the look of different Stormtrooper helmets over time definitely evoke the societies in which those clone troopers in this instance come from. We meet a lot of the clone troopers during Order 66. Order 66 is when Palpatine orders the destruction of the Jedi. Execute Order 66. One thing that differentiates the clone troopers from uh, episode three from the ones in episode two is the clone troopers uh, are exerting their individuality. Their costumes have different colorations and patterns. They are named characters, which is not typically how we differentiate different stormtroopers from each other. Thank you, Cody. For example, Commander Cody was named after Commando Cody. Commando Cody. Uh, it's an old serial that George loved. And I love those all those little elements, you know, sort of bringing things from George's uh, inspiration to sort of his films. And so this is one of those highlights for me that makes me smile. We're on your tail, General Kenobi. Clone Trooper Pilot. Um, in looking at the Clone Trooper Pilot, we see some elements that definitely are going to slowly evolve into what we now know as our uh, original trilogy, High Fighter Pilots. The Biker Advanced Recon Trooper is kind of an interesting look. We're taking all the key elements of the Stormtrooper helmets and now we're really stylizing it, trying to create a very aggressive personality in the face. AT-RT driver, his costume is suited for his environment. His uh, sort of army green camouflage look and face uh, shield. Yes, sir. Uh, the Elite Corps Clone Trooper, and these were primarily seen during the Battle of Kashyyyk. You're starting to see a blend of the classic Stormtrooper with the Scout Trooper in terms of that open face scream. Um, and they wear a very distinct camo look to fit the environment. Galactic Marines, the face mask on this one reminds us of the Snow Trooper from Hoth. Uh, during Order 66, this clone trooper is responsible for killing Ki Adi Mundi, beloved Jedi. The 501st Special Ops clone troopers fought alongside Anakin Skywalker as they attacked the Jedi Temple in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. The Imperial Shock Troopers were part of Palpatine's guards and they were colored red. 
We first see them on Coruscant alongside Palpatine, after Order 66. Utapau Airborne Clone Trooper. You can start to see further evolutions of the helmet. Now we're starting to blend a little bit more of the Scout Trooper along with the iconic shapes of the Vader mask. Sir, no one could have survived that fall. The 327th Star Corps Clone Troopers uh, are distinguished by their, their yellow elements in their uniforms. They wear a skirt, which we will see later on in future Star Wars uh, Stormtrooper designs. The Coruscant Clone Troopers are denoted by their gray markings, and they're primarily used to defend Coruscant. First Order Stormtrooper. The updated design is not only an updated take on the Stormtrooper armor uh, that we know and love, but the technology in which the uh, costume effects department enlisted in order to create these physical costumes was incredible achievements compared to the original trilogy. The original trilogy, while using back form methods to create plastic armor, the First Order armor was primarily created using 3D printing methods and also um, molded polyurethane casting and molding to create uh, incredibly malleable pieces of armor. The First Order Stormtrooper, you'll notice, we're actually taking the next evolution in terms of Stormtrooper design, really stylizing the black and white features of the down frown mouth. And then also, part of the personality design idea was to make these guys really kind of brutal, very strong, very powerful. There are a lot of many design considerations and challenges. One of the first thoughts was how do we evolve the Stormtrooper, the classic Stormtroopers, into the next generation? And we approached it by really thinking about new materials. What would the new materials affect the design? And that's where you start to see sort of the cleaner lines, the cleaner edges, and you start to really understand that, okay, this could be a next evolution of the classic Stormtrooper. Partly based on design decisions and also based on um, advancing construction methods, the helmets between the Force Awakens First Order Stormtroopers and the Force Order Stormtrooper helmets we see in The Last Jedi have slight variations. Um, the bridge on the helmet nose is slightly narrower in the uh, Last Jedi versions of these helmets. The First Order Stormtroopers were really evoking a lot of the historical elements from the classic Stormtroopers. And by that I mean we're actually kind of implying that these are kind of going back to the original genesis of the Stormtroopers, but yet updating it with all new materials. Captain Phasma, we're trying to take the evolution of the First Order Stormtrooper and elevating it to a higher rank. And we did that by changing the material, turning her into this amazing chrome look designed by Michael Kaplan. J.J. Abrams named Captain Phasma after Phantasm, that horror film where there was this chrome ball that was very menacing. Initially, this character was meant to be cast as a male character. Once they decided to have this be a female actor, they didn't make any adjustments to the costumes. The costume that Gwendolyn Christie wears as Captain Phasma, it still has the same amount of strength evoked in wearing it. However, it's still clear that a woman is wearing the suit. Captain Phasma's costume in The Last Jedi is uh, visually more chrome than the costume that we see in The Force Awakens. And part of this is because her ability to be shot on camera in Episode 7 proved to be very challenging because uh, oftentimes lighting and cameras would be shown in the reflections of her costume. And so to combat that, it's a bit duller of a sheen. By Episode 8, um, Industrial Light and Magic was full on ready for the challenge of handling that amount of chrome on her costume. And it was much more effective to have the costume visually appear to be much uh, stronger in China. The first time we see the First Order Flame Troopers is on Jakku when they are attacking the village. The First Order Flame Troopers are distinguished by their backpacks that provide power for their flame uh, rifles that they carry. First Order Riot Control Stormtrooper. The first time that we see this riot trooper is in The Force Awakens, where he is well known for being the stormtrooper that yells, Traitor! Uh, this character carries a very menacing baton as well as a riot shield. The First Order stormtroopers were much more likely to have individuated skill sets and tasks. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, this particular stormtrooper is outfitted, uh, in this case weapons, that um, most effectively help him to do his duties. <laughs> the First Order Mega Blaster Stormtrooper is distinguished by the uh, ammunition packs that he wears over his chest armor, as well as a very large heavy, heavy blaster. The First Order Snow Troopers were a, the next evolution of the classic Snow Troopers that we saw in Empire Strikes Back. And you'll see that we preserved the veil that covers the mask, and we kept the overall silhouette, and the only thing we really updated was just to give them a little bit more mass to make them a little bit more powerful looking. 
Uh, the first order of Thai pilots, uh, we kind of kept the same idea where we took the classic uh, first order outfit and just made them black. And then for the special ops version, we gave them red stripes. And that's to kind of mirror the red stripes that we see on the Thai fighters. The Imperial Assault tank pilot is one of those designs that's one of my favorite because it takes these sort of the stylized look of the stormtroopers and we kind of refine the lines. And you'll see that all the elements are there, but they're very clean. Many of the armor pieces on this costume are actually the same exact pieces as you see on the shore trooper. This mask was designed um, by Glenn Dillon. He and co-costume designer David Crossman created this helmet design that sort of, um, sort of a bit like the Death Trooper has this mandible effect to it to give it a bit of a menacing look. The Imperial Death Troopers were a new class of Stormtroopers, and we first see the Death Troopers in Rogue One alongside Director Krennic. We wanted to design them so that they were sleek and powerful, more like the SEAL Team 6 of Stormtroopers, and we distinctly made them larger than life, so they were taller than 6 feet, and we also decided to keep them very narrow so they looked like very athletic and that they could move very fast. One of the distinguishing factors of the Death Troopers is the mask, and we spent a lot of time designing that, and ultimately we ended up with this very aggressive look where the side cheeks actually almost became like mandibles, so it gave it a very slight menacing spider-like personality. The Imperial Shore Trooper, we first see these in Rogue One. Their roles are very present in uh, Battle on Scarif. They are distinguished by three different looks that denote their ranking. So there's the Shore Trooper Captain, there's the Shore Trooper Squad Leader, and there's the Soldier. But the colors that they wear, uh, the blue definitely evokes the, the ocean and the water that they fight alongside in Scarif, and then the beige color is sort of meant to match the beach that they mm -hmm. fight in. These costumes were designed to fit the environment. Very much like the Scout Troopers, they have less armor and more soft fabrics. Mm -hmm. And also you can see a little bit of the Scout Trooper in the face mask. Let's make this hurt. The first time we see the Executioner Troopers is aboard the Supremacy flanking Captain Phasma in The Last Jedi. The First Order Executioner is distinguished by black markings, and he also carries an electro laser axe. <laughs> On my command. The first time we meet the Praetorian Guards is in Snoke's throne room in The Last Jedi. The elite Praetorian Guards have three different helmet variations. Uh, their helmets and their weapons are coordinated. Their costume design is meant to show that they are at the ready, but that they are also able to move flexibly. They're sort of evoking a, a bit of a samurai style. Actually, my favorite scene in The Last Jedi is when Rey and Kylo Ren fight and defeat all of the Praetorian Guards in Snoke's throne room. The Mimbin Stormtroopers, the uniforms of the Mimbin Stormtroopers are meant to um, suit and, and look and fit into the environment in which they fight, which is the Mimbin battlefields, but they also have a cape to help with that, and then their helmet has a, an added lip on top that distinguishes it from a regular um, classic Stormtrooper helmet. Yeah, kill them slower! The Imperial Mud Troopers, we first see the Stormtrooper in Solo. Those were an interesting design where we were trying to go backwards in time a little bit from the classic Stormtrooper. And the idea was that these troopers were in a very dirty, mud-filled environment, so we want to make them look very gritty. Costume designers Glenn Dillon and Dave Crossman uh, used elements of World War I soldiers that were um, fighting using trench warfare tactics to help design and inform the look of this costume. And much like the trench warfare during World War I, the, uh, these mud troopers were outfitted with similar types of combat gear that you would have seen in World War I. For instance, their, their gas mask evokes that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we also see Han Solo wearing a version of this uh, uniform uh, while fighting in Mimbin. And um, his is a bit different from others in that we actually see his face because we're, we're meant to see Han Solo because we need to know that it's Han Solo. Stick the soldier in, kid. You don't want any part of this. <laughs> The Imperial Patrol Trooper, we first see on Corellia in Solo. And you'll notice in the design, we're actually starting to now blend even more Scout Trooper into the look. So the whole outfit is a little bit more soft fabrics, and then the face is a blend of the classic Trooper with the Scout Trooper. The first time we see the Range Troopers is during the train heist in Solo. And what distinguishes them is the magnetic boots, which allows them to actually clamp onto the exterior of the train. Um, the, the actual practical build of the boots includes um, light up, it has some hydraulic mechanisms in there that actually emit steam, and this is to give that full effect so that as we see it practically shot, 
the boots will definitely give you that illusion that they're magnetic. The first time we see the First Order jet troopers are on Vasana. Uh, the jet troopers jetpack is actually part of his armor, and we see other elements that are meant to evoke this sort of uh, fast-moving jet propulsion characterization that this trooper armor has. There's actually an homage to an original Ralph McQuarrie production painting on the insignia on the chest plate. We first see that in the First Order sto uh, snow trooper, but then costume artist Glenn Dillon decided to add a version of that insignia into this jet trooper. We also see the mandible design returning on the helmet. They fly now! The first time we see the First Order Tread Speeder driver is in The Rise of Skywalker. The First Order Tread Speeder combines elements of a First Order Stormtrooper armor pieces along with a sort of further evolution of the Biker Scout. There's a soft pant element as opposed to thigh armor to make it so that this Stormtrooper is better suited to riding a new version of a sort of speeder bike. This is a First Order Electroprod Stormtrooper. We first see them in The Rise of Skywalker. They are denoted by the fact that they have a new weapon, the Electroprod. The Sith Trooper is a new trooper for The Rise of Skywalker. If we think about the white Stormtrooper evoking a skeleton, the Sith Trooper is meant to evoke kind of the muscles, kind of the internal strength that you might find in a soldier. Much like the Death Trooper, it fits quite close to the body. It's meant to evoke the fact that this is a Stormtrooper that's ready for any, anything that comes at it. Uh, one of the interesting aspects is that you'll notice in the helmet, we're bringing back some of the elements of the clone trooper with that strong sort of nose T-visor look. The Sith Jet Trooper it combines elements of the Sith Trooper and the First Order Jet Trooper that we see in The Rise of Skywalker. There's a jet pack that's connected to the back armor of, of this trooper, as well as that sort of mandible effect on the helmet. And that was every single clone trooper and stormtrooper in the live-action Star Wars films. And that's it for now, but we can't wait for you to see what's coming up next. <laughs>